Well, I've tidied up um, some of the previous model, put a few extra features in here. I'm just going to do that, okay, it's better. Hang on. And I want to, this will give me a chance to demonstrate a few more features, both about dynamic systems and about Minsky. So you'll notice that I've added here equilibrium values for the fish growth rate and actually the shark equilibrium value and the fish equilibrium value. And because I've now got, uh, and notice by the way, that the equilibrium value for the sharks depends upon the parameters for the fish. And the equilibrium value for the fish depends on the parameters for the sharks. One of those cute little things about dynamic systems. And so I'm feeding in the equilibria across here. You can see it's not changing over time. Now, if I change any of the parameter values, that would change. I might demonstrate that in a second. And I've also got the equilibrium point being shown here because as well as feeding in the number of fish on the green and the number of sharks on the green here, so I get the green limit cycle. I'm also feeding in the fish equilibrium value on the red and on the shark on the red as well. So that dot is the uh, unchanging equilibrium value. As I said, if I change the parameters, that will change. And what else have I got to show here? Uh, yeah, using the same number, uh, you know, because as I said, we overload operators, so you can use the same op same uh, zero point for both, uh, gra both graphs there. I'm multiplying the fish equilibrium value by three. It happens to be exactly the Kames constant here, so if I change that constant, whoops. Okay, that's a bug. That is the uh, sideways arrow key functioning occasionally as a way of stepping between the the, uh, the tabs here. So just it's it's this software has had about 3,000 hours of development time, which is trivial uh, in computer programming time. So and we've got one programmer developing it, uh, and you know get, getting everything done within the budget is not exactly easy. So bugs turn up. That fortunately the uh, other arrow keys also work. So if I use the down arrow key. That moves, and you'll notice as I click there and change the value at that particular point. Okay, here we go. Okay, this one's changing as well. Now let's go back. I'm going to move the location around. Now that's probably going to be too little to include the entire limit cycle there. Let's just click and see what happens. I oh, know the whole lot includes. And you can also see on this particular chart, I think I added this since last uh, video. I'm now graphing the sharks on the left-hand axis and the fish on the right-hand axis so that they overlap with each other uh, reasonably well. And you can see little features about the system as well. The uh, maximum for the value of sharks occurs at the maximum um, minimum rate of decline there of the fish numbers. So second differential effects turn up, and that again is a common thing in complex systems. You can see the number of fish changing over time, the number of sharks, it's all indicated. And uh, you can see all the equations that generate this uh, model are visible on screen, as well as the simulation itself. And pardon me being a bit uh, snobbish, but I think that's better than that system. We've got to click inside boxes, see the font first of all, so important to get the font right. Uh, and then you can see the equation, which in this case is the number two. Um, it's rather harder than just looking here and seeing what the number actually is, which uh, in this particular case, he says, where the hell have I got it? Okay, that's 0.5 there. Uh, we're using um, scientific notation to be able to keep the text string for the number uh, without overriding the side of the box. That is 0.2 there. That one, that's come down here. That's 2, same as the other simulation in Vensim, and that is 0 0.01. But you can see all the values once you get used to reading the scientific notation, you can see the values there. So uh, to actually show what a dynamic system is, I think this is a superior interface to what is standard in the industry, even though it's only had about 3,000 hours worth the development time. But a lot of features that are commonplace in the other programs aren't there yet. One feature we didn't have was search and replace. Now we have it, so I might just demonstrate that. Um, fish growth rate, um, shark death rate, etc., etc. I think it's probably easier if I just standardize all that stuff. I can right-click here and choose Rename All Instances. Now, fish growth rate's okay, I'll stick with that, but I'll make this fish death rate. So right-click, choose Rename All Instances, and now I can say it's fish underscore curly brackets, death, close curly brackets, up, uh, and uh, up uh, carrot, curly brackets, rate. So I do that, and that's now changed in the two locations where it's used, and I'll do the same thing. I've got shark death rate, I should also have shark growth rate down here, so uh, let's rename that. So make that shark underscore, which gives you the subscript curly brackets, 
I forgot what I'm typing. Growth rate, pardon me. Growth, up, okay, boom, rate. Okay, having done that, click OK. So none of those variables have changed throughout the, throughout the model. Let's just click and see how it runs. Oh dear, what have I done? Let's see. Divide by zero. Where did that go? Let's just click again. Great. Okay, if this ever happens to you, what I recommend you do is choose File, Save As. Perhaps if I got reset again, as I said, there are bugs. I may have just discovered one by accident. So I'll make that 02 here. All right, let's just go and put a new system. That mirror message will come up again. File, new. Oh, great. Okay, if the loss fails, shut it down. Now I'm going to go back to my quick access and load it. What have I got? Okay, it's all there. But possibly one of the values have been changed to zero. Oh, the fish death rate. All right, that's a bug. Uh, we've somehow lost the number for the fish death rate there. So it reset the um, uh, the variable, but it changed it to being zero in both cases. So again, uh, another bug to be identified to be fixed up later. So I'll just actually, uh, what have I got? 218. So I want something which is going to be close to that. So if I just come down here and I use the arrow key to change it to a positive value, then hit the, and I'll do it to both of them. So they're both non-zero now. Click once. And now I've got, uh, I can now see the equilibrium values. So it's 50 sharks. That's a bit too many sharks. Let's make it larger as a divisor. So I now get five sharks, which is where I was beforehand. And um, that's one reason to use this little indicator here, because it lets you work out what's a sensible set of initial conditions for the sake of a dynamic simulation. Of course, if you're actually with working with real data, you'd want data based on real data. And these models, the predator-prey models, were first developed by the mathematician Volterra, I think is the mathematician, in response to requests from the uh, biologist Lochta, because in analysing the data coming out of Italian fishing uh, villages during the First World War, he found a dramatic change in the ratio of sharks to fish. And the reason was that a lot of the uh, third, a lot of the fishermen were off in the war, and since they're in the war, the predator on both fish and sharks, which was the fishermen, disappeared, and that changed the dynamics between the fish and the sharks. So it was the first step to explain what the dynamics were. Uh, Volterra came up with the basic concept about um, the rate of growth of fish in the absence of sharks being constant, percentage rate of growth, so you seem they've got a limitless supply of, of seagrass to eat. Uh, and then the simplest possible model, minus a constant times how many sharks there are to in show the interaction with sharks, and ditto in the opposite direction, sharks declining, plus an interaction term multiplied by how many fish there are. Now, just to simulate the model for a short while. Ah, so now I've got a much smaller circle, as you can see. So what I might do is just change that magnification there. I'm not actually affecting it right now. Let's, let's see if I just hit uh, pause. Actually, it goes to stop. I'll make it a smaller one there. Yeah, still a bit too small. Okay, interesting. It looks like now these two numbers are separated. They're not changing together. So um, again, there's some inconsistency in various features. When I copied and pasted, it was still effectively the same entity. Now that I've reset the simulation, they're different entities. Um, and clearly, I'm choosing a number which is much closer to the equilibrium's initial value, so I'm getting less cyclical behavior. So I might just make that one a bit smaller again. Let's go for 1.5 times the equilibrium as a maximum. Should be enough. And I'll do the same on the sharks here. Okay, let's go again. Yeah, a bit better. I could. This is just a, a demonstration to show what you can do with the program, so I won't fiddle around any more than that. Um, so that's just to talk about the dynamics of the system now. That is the equilibrium. 
Now, if you're a neoclassical economist, that's what you'd work out, and you presume that's how many fish and sharks there are. Sorry, you can't, because the equilibrium is unstable. Actually, it's got a very particular form of instability. It's it's called a neutral equilibrium. It neither attracts nor repels, but you get cyclical behaviour around the equilibrium. So the whole idea that you can uh, to ex to explain a dynamic model just by knowing what the equilibrium is is ignorant. And I'm using that word now because of some rather aggressive papers coming out of neoclassicals uh, like Christiani, the one that said that anybody who doesn't like DSG models is a dilettante. Frankly, anybody who believes that is a dilettante in dynamic systems. They don't know the range of software that's available. And Minsky, as I've said, is one iteration of that. So I'll just um, stop this one now. Let's just, uh, again, I'll simulate a bit faster to show the dynamics. But you have to be able to model non-equilibrium systems to model d dynamic systems properly. And capitalism, sorry guys, is a dynamic system. It's not an equilibrium one. Um, you just have to learn better techniques than you're currently using, which I'm hoping to show you. Okay, that's one. I'll go on to another model, set of models in a moment, showing you how you can use Minsky for a range of dynamic systems. Then the next one after this will be showing what Minsky is special about Minsky, which is this thing over here called the Godley Table, which lets us model financial dynamics. dynamics. Uh, easily compared to doing it with a flowchart.